to uh, welcome everybody who's here tonight for our Thanksgiving service. And we, uh, I understand we have a birthday boy here tonight. Jack. He's got a birthday today of all the days. You can't get out of it. So let's just sing happy birthday to Jack. Happy birthday to you. So that's uh, where you're offering to go tonight to uh, one of those missions, or maybe we'll be, I don't know how to do it. Let the committee decide how they'll disperse that offering tonight. But uh, we're thankful for those of you that will give towards that this this evening. Other than that, I don't really have any other announcements to make other than just saying it's just good to be out on a Wednesday, Wednesday night and to be able to. Give thanks to the Lord for what he has done and what he's going to do for us uh, in the coming year as well. As we look back, as we think of today, and looking ahead in the future, that God is, is with us. And so I'm just going to have a word of prayer and then turn it over to the praise band as they sing, on, sing a couple songs for us here this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight because you are worthy of of our praise and uh, it is you Lord that puts the thankfulness in our hearts and uh, sometimes Lord we're not always a, a happy camper with things that go on in, in our nation or in the world or sometimes even in our own lives but uh, when we think of you we know that we are grateful and thankful that you do not uh, forsake us but you're always here with us, no matter what takes place, no matter what comes our way. It may surprise us, but it does not surprise you. And so we're thankful tonight for those that are here to, uh, to just be thankful for who you are. We're thankful for those that are on Zoom tonight, or will be watching this uh, later on. We are just 
We just want everyone to know that uh, we appreciate them and that we are glad that they uh, can be a part of our service here tonight or in the days ahead. So bless our time together as we draw our hearts close to you and think heavenward and look heavenward to know that you are here in our midst tonight and uh, everything that is done and said tonight, Lord, is because of you, because of Jesus Christ. May you receive all the thanks from our hearts tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stay for this first song that we share together. Please stand and give thanks to the Lord our God.
sure if you're going to quit, but keep going. <laughs> well, Jeff, we're going to have a little commissioning service for Jeff, uh, Kyle, after the response reading here tonight. And so it comes from the general thanksgiving from the standard book of common prayer. It says this, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all mankind. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your incomparable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly the angle hearts we may make known to your graces. Not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service. And by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory throughout all ages. Jeff, will you come forward? Are you back there? Come on forward here. Typically, we would uh, have whoever wanted to come up to lay hands on Jeff, but uh, we won't do that tonight. But we'll have him come up here, and uh, you're going to be leaving on Sunday morning, I understand. How many years have you been going down to Wy Wymus? Since 2000. 2000? That's 20 years. Yeah. You're a young man. <laughs> I'm glad for What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my hand on his shoulder and pray for him. If you would like, you can uh, extend your hand out towards Jeff as I pray. And uh, you are you are just as much of this as, as I am. And as a church, we just want to extend to you, Lord, extend to you, Jeff, the Lord's blessing to you. And uh, you might have trouble back there tonight. You might have trouble before. I don't know what's going on tonight, but it's, it's going. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's, let's just pray for Jeff, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jeff. Thank you for his willingness to go to Mexico and to be down there with uh, Candy. Lord, uh, Jeff has got a love for the people, the place down there. He's been going down there for 20 years. And so we send him. We send him as someone from Harbor of Joy to the people down there and to the people he knows and the people he meets for the first time. And Lord, like the song we sang tonight, you give and you take away. We give to you, Jeff. We pray for him. And uh, even though that he will leave us for a few months, we pray, Lord, that you bring him back as well. And to fill his heart the goodness of Jesus Christ, that he be a blessing to those that he meets. And so, Lord, be him, be the light in him and through him to the people that he will meet, that they will see Jesus and Jeff, and that they too will see their need to have Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. So it is a privilege for us as a church to be able to know of someone within the church who you have called and are taken out of this country to be used in another place. May you know that we love him, we care about him, and that he is in our prayers for his safety, for the safe trip, as well as for health. Pray your blessing upon you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know God's words? It's such a wonderful deal to have you people partner with me in this, too. 
And uh, I just want you to know that it, it's amazing how prayers can be felt. And I, I just love it. And I thank you ahead of time for all of those. And like I said, I really appreciate you guys partnering with me. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling. And even though I'm going, I'll be tickled to get back to <laughs> you guys. Thank you.
flute when it is played, especially when you play it. Let me see, 7.30 here in uh, Milford, Iowa, in the evening. <clears throat> I don't want to go till 8 o'clock, and I don't want this to be like a Sunday morning service, but that's kind of what I planned for, but I go like, I don't want that. So I'm going to kind of shave off some of my message tonight, and you won't even know it. <laughs> and you will be thankful <laughs> that I did. Or you will say at the end, you didn't shave off enough, Pastor. <laughs> well, anyway, but I just, I'm just going to let you know, it's going to hit some of these things that uh, we got before us. But I do want to invite you to uh, be mindful, listen to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And uh, let's let you sit and just listen to these words from the Apostle Paul to Timothy, uh, a guy that he took under his wing when Timothy found Paul and said, will you disciple me? It says this, I urge you then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Heavenly Father, as we begin, I guess as I begin this message here tonight, help me to bring forth the truths that it is for us here today in 2020. And may we be encouraged by it. May, may we leave tonight, Lord, with thankful hearts because of all that has been said and done here in the sanctuary tonight. And for those that are listening in, in their homes or wherever they may be, no matter what state they may be in, we're just glad that they can join us and listen in as well. And so, Lord, use these words of the Apostle Paul given to the churches and to the leaders in these churches that will be helpful to them in the days, years, decades, and centuries ahead, even for today. And so we just pray your blessing on these words as we hear them and as I preach them tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. What are the three books in the New Testament that are called the pastoral epistles? I'm not going to call on Tim that because he, he would know the answer to this. The pastoral epistles. Which three books are they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Time zone. It's first and second Timothy and Titus. Those are the pastoral epistles. And uh, I remember one time uh, hearing a story about a pastor who asked someone in his confirmation class saying, uh, who can tell me what is an epistle? And uh, one of the students shot their hand up right away and said, oh, that's an easy one. An epistle is the name of the wife of a disciple. <laughs> well, sorry, that's not the right answer. No. Not the right answer. <laughs> an epistle means a letter. It is a letter that has been written uh, for the purpose of, of pastors and church leaders telling them about the duties and responsibilities that they have in regards to the church. And that's why we have the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy and Titus. That's, a, that's always something uh, that was very helpful for me going through seminary to learn about some of these things that uh, are in Scripture and how they apply to the day in which we live in. So tonight I'd like for us to be looking at the Thanksgiving priorities that we find here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, 1 through 4. And what is really interesting that I have found in, in just getting ready for tonight is that the pastoral epistles 
they deal with public worship. And I found that very interesting because I'm going like, public worship? That's like what we're doing here tonight. It is publicly proclaiming what God's word says. And, uh, and so I find that if Paul found that public worship is important, boy, how much more important it is in the day in which we live in. After we've, we've been listening to the news at all, you know, it's places where churches, and even in, this whole, or in our own area, there are churches who are not meeting together. Online, of course, or Zoom. But there's something special that happens when we meet together in person. And uh, that's nothing against those of you that are watching this or video, on video or wherever you're at. You know, you do what you believe is important for you, especially if you have an immune system that is compromised. The public worship is, is very important. And uh, there's four things in our text tonight that I, I want to talk on, and each one of them starts with a P. So there's going to be four P's here. Uh, there's more P's than that in a pod, I think. But um, the first one we're going to look at is public worship. Two is prayer. The, the third one, this will be a really good one, politics and peace. Because you have all of these things involved just in these four verses of 1 Timothy, chapter 2. So the, the importance of public worship, I just want to look at that as saying, you know, what do you have when public worship is taken away? Just think about that for, for a moment. What do you have when we're told you cannot meet together in a church. You end up then with a high-priced building or a facility that stands pretty empty. Is that a good thing? So something kind of says, you know, that's just weird. It's odd. Why go through the expense of building or buying a church building and then you can't use it? I mean, already prayers were taken out of the schools, unless you got a test. Kids say, I still pray for a test. But you think of, you know, it's just another thing that is being taken away from us. And so far, not much back pushback going on that we see in um, our country. So you have an empty church, you have empty pews. You have no choir to listen to and no concerts. You know, you miss that, Bob? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you guys miss it too. You know, you go back, I think last year, I think we did have a choir. If I remember right, we had a choir. The people would come. You know, that the church was a lot fuller this time last year, because of the choir. You have no fellowship that can take place and really no corporate prayer, people just getting together to pray together. We think of uh, COVID-19 that has hit this year, how that has changed us and how we do things. You know, there's new things that we deal with we've never had to deal with before. You know, don't shake hands. Keep your distance. You know, it's just, uh, it's so different. And it goes against sometimes our brain. I mean, how do you say hi to somebody without extending a hand and letting them shake hands? I mean, now you got to go like, okay, what do I do with it? I have to ask people, can I shake your hand? Can I bump your elbow? Or, or what? <laughs> what can I do? And it's so odd as a pastor these days. And if it's weird for me, I know it's got to be also weird for you too. Because I know what you were like when you first came. I've never been hugged so much. And I'm going, who in the world are these people? <laughs> they are huggers. I'm not used to being hugged so much, you know. But that's who you are. And now that, that is something 
because told you're not supposed to do it. And you don't see much of that happening every now and then. You might catch somebody because it's so funny. Here's what I don't understand. Is um, you're not supposed to be meeting in churches. Well, why can we go to Walmart? And all the people are passing the doors. Why, why can the liquor stores be open? We have not churches. In California, I don't know if you heard about this. Uh, they're saying that you cannot have church out there, but the strip clubs can be open. And so one pastor, the other night, he took off his tie. <laughs> And said that, welcome to whatever the church's name is. You know, this is uh, turning into a strip club. I just taken off the tie. He didn't take off anything more than that. <laughs> just a <the> time. <laughs> you got casinos that can be open. There's gas stations, grocery stores, and on and on. You could go to that. But you know, this is a place where a lot of people go in and out. And that's okay. But then it comes to meeting together to worship God and bring people together. I'm kind of told to stay away from that. I have a difficult time with that. Told in churches, you're not to be comfortable, then don't sing. Don't do any touching with anybody. Uh, don't shake hands. Uh, watch gatherings. Don't be so too many, especially for funerals. You know how terrible it is. To have someone that you know who's died and, and you can't even go to the funeral. Or if you do get to go, you're not supposed to even touch the person or the family. And that's just not who we are. So are we supposed to be the other way? And I don't know how. You've got churches told not to meet out of the East Coast. No gyms are to be open. <coughs> But at the same time, they allow dance studios to be open. How do we get that? And maybe you're here tonight and you're like me, you don't get it either. I don't know what the answer is, other than to know that don't give up on God. God is just as much with us as He always has been. It's just kind of a new day that we depend on him in ways maybe we never have had to before. There's a priority of prayer that is also in this text. We have the Apostle Paul says, I urge you then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. Now there are seven nouns in the Greek for prayer, and here in just one verse we've got four. Four words for prayer. Requests, uh, just the word prayer. We have intercession. We have thanksgiving. Those are kind of the four words that are used in this in this text. Uh, we find that, that there's a priority of politics. You know, politics affect us if we like it or not, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, whoever you voted for, that's in God's hands as far as who will be the next president. But is it too much to ask? Can it be a fair election? Can it be an honest election? And that's all we want. That's all I want. Honest, fair. Because that whoever comes out and is fair and honest, I'm, I'm okay with that. It's just like asking church. Is it too much to ask a church to follow what's in the Bible? Or not? Same thing. If the church doesn't want to follow the Bible, then I want to find a church that does. We're to pray for everyone. It says to pray for kings. Now we don't have kings, but we do have a president. We're to pray for our leaders in our country. Those that are legislatures, 
those that are prominent leaders, administrators, judicial leaders. You know, when the Apostle Paul wrote this book, he was in Rome, Italy. And I guess who was the emperor in Rome at the time he was, he was arrested twice. He was in jail two times. He did get out the first time. But you, you remember a man by the name of Nero. And if Paul wrote this epistle and he says to pray for kings, I wonder if he prayed also for Nero. I believe he would have. And so it doesn't really matter when it comes to politics, if it's Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, or Barbarian. You pray for everyone. You pray for everyone. And the reason for that is, is the last, the last priority of this Thanksgiving message is that there's peace. We pray for peace. That we all we want is to have a peaceful life, a quiet life, to be with our families and to watch them to grow up and to see the grandkids grow up as well. Is that asking too much? I don't think it is. It's the country, America, that I grew up in and that I know of, that's what it is. To live peaceful and quiet lives. To have peace with God through Jesus Christ, who's our Savior first, and then to love our neighbor. And who is our neighbor? Everyone. I keep hammering that home with some of my confirmation kids. I say, who's our neighbor? Well, some have a hard time <laughs> thinking it's everybody. I said, what does Jesus say? How are we supposed to treat our neighbor? What are we supposed to do to our neighbor? We're supposed to love them. All right. So it's kind of like, that's what he says. Let's do it. And you can't do that in your own strength and power. And God can give you that love for your neighbor. But when we have absence of outward noise and disturbance, then there's peace and there's quiet. You've seen some riots and some looting, some destruction this past summer and fall. That's not what God desires. He desires peace and tranquility. Prayer is important because that happens inside of us to be able to have that quietness and that strength that comes from him. That peace that passes all understanding. Reminds me of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. But in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's a great verse. Actually, it's two verses, six and seven, chapter four of Philippians. God wants all men and women and children to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Truth is one of those things in our world today that it's pretty relative. If you say the Bible is truth, you're going to have a lot of opposition. They say, well, you might think it's true, but I don't. Truth is whatever you say it's going to be. That's what the world teaches and, and wants you to believe. It's relative. What is true for you may not be true for somebody else. But I still hold that the Bible is true. Always has been, always will be. We can stand on his word. And the truth is in a person by the name of Jesus Christ. 
Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. So my friends, Thanksgiving is more than just turkey and dressing, mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie. It's more than that. Thanksgiving is an attitude that comes to us when we humble ourselves in the presence of God. We can be grateful tonight regardless of our circumstances and our situations when we know that we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Some of you have heard this and know what it probably already says before I even say it. But it's God who says to the people of Israel, where he says, If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Is God reaching hearts and lives of people through this COVID-19 pandemic? And I believe He is. You don't hear a whole lot about it. But I believe God has a plan and He still has a way of dealing, getting close to people through what is taking place in this world. So when you sit around the, the table tomorrow, take time to express your thanks to whoever is there and say, you know, what are you thankful for today? Or if you think back this past year, what are you thankful for? And express that thanks. And, you know, and go, go a little deeper than just family. What do you thank God for? What is it about God that you thank Him today? And what do you thank God about with other people? Remember that tomorrow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that we do not live in a perfect country in a perfect world and yet you continue to encourage us to have faith and to have a living faith and to allow you to work in us and through us even in times when it's not the easy thing to do Lord, we're not made to just stay in our homes and to be quiet. It is your great commission in Matthew that says that we are to go and to make disciples. We are to share Jesus with those around us and with those in the world today. So we look to you, Lord, to help us in this endeavor. We may run into some, some roadblocks along the way. We may run into some walls. We may run into some dead ends. But we're never alone when we have you in our hearts and our lives. So Lord, make this this Thanksgiving, which is tomorrow, a special day. It is a celebration. We can still call people who we love and care for. We can still fill our bellies with good food and be thankful, as there are many in this world who Think about what they're going to eat 
the moment they wake up in the morning and don't know where it's going to come from. So Lord, use us even though we find ourselves living in an awkward time, in a different kind of time for sure, that we may still bring glory to your name. We may still show Jesus Christ to others who don't know him. And may we strengthen each other as we can and when we see each other to be thankful for crossing our paths at this time in history to be able to do this together. May we encourage each other and spur one another on until the day of your coming. May we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand as we recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we close with this call.